Hello and welcome to this video on perpendicular lines. Now perpendicular just means at right angles to each other. So these two lines are perpendicular because the angle between them is 90 degrees. Now let's investigate the gradients of each of these lines. So this gradient here of this line, can you see each time x increases by one, the y value increases by two, so the gradient would be two. And what about the gradient of this second line? So each time x increases by 1, we're going down a fraction of a square. Now, can you see if you go 2 across, you're going 1 down. So if you go 1 across, you're going half down. So the gradient is minus half. The line is going down by half the square each time. Now, let's see what happens when we multiply these together. If we do m1 times m2, the two gradients times together, then 2 times minus half is equal to minus 1. Now, let's try it for this one here. The gradient of this line here is equal to, well, each time x increases by 1, we're going down 1, 2, 3 squares. The y value is changing by minus 3, so that's the gradient. And what's the gradient of the other line? Each time you're going across 1, each time x increasing by 1, you're going up a third of a square. And that's because if you go 3 across, you go 1 up. So 1 across is a third up. So the gradient is positive a third. And again, let's multiply them together. Minus 3 times a third, well, negative times positive is negative, and we're going to get minus 1 again, because a third of 3 is 1. And that's always the case. If you have two perpendicular lines, the product of their gradients is always minus 1. So let's write that. So m1 times m2 is always equal to minus 1 if the lines are perpendicular. That symbol there means perpendicular. Now, if we divide by m1, we get m2 is equal to minus 1 over M1. And that's basically saying if we've got the gradient of one line, we can get the gradient of the other line by doing the negative reciprocal. One over something means the reciprocal, so I'm going to call this negative reciprocal. And that's the way to remember the formula. So let's put this in a box because this is super important. That's what we're going to use for this video. Uh, let's do some examples. So we've got two perpendicular lines. If the gradient of the first was 2, What's the gradient of the second one? Well, we do the negative reciprocal. So negate it, so that's minus 2, and then do 1 over it, the reciprocal. So it's minus a half. If we had, say, minus 5, what would be the gradient of the perpendicular line? Well, we do the negative reciprocal. Negate that, becomes positive 5, and then do 1 over it, it's going to be 1 over 5. Let's do a few more. If we had a quarter, we want to do the negative reciprocal. So we negate it, so it becomes negative because it was positive before. And then the reciprocal of a quarter is 4. Reciprocal of a fraction basically flips it upside down, so it becomes 4 over 1, which is just 4. And what about if I had minus a fifth? We negate it, so it becomes positive. And we reciprocate a fifth, it becomes 5 over 1, which is just 5. And finally, if we had 2 thirds, we find the negative reciprocal to find the perpendicular gradient. So we negate it, it's minus, and then we reciprocate the fraction, it flips it over, so it'd be minus 3 over 2. Right, let's use this theory to solve some problems. We've got a line passes through the 0.45 and is perpendicular to another line with equation y equals 2x plus 5. Determine its equation. Now, the gradient of this other line is the number in front of the x, the coefficient of x, which is 2. So the gradient of this other line is 2, then the gradient of this line we're interested in is going to be the negative reciprocal of that, which is minus a half. So we've got that m is minus half, and we're also told it passes through 4, 5. So in previous videos, we've seen how we can use a point and a gradient to find the equation of the line. So what we do is we write y equals mx plus c using what we know so far, y equals mx plus c. We we know the m, but we don't know the c. And remember, because this point lies on the line with this equation, this must satisfy this equation. Hence, we can substitute the 4 and the 5 into here. So we know that's the x and that's the y. So y, 5, is equal to minus half times 4. Now, if you think half times 4, half of 4 is 2, but it's negative that. So it's minus 2 plus c. Add 2 to both sides, we get c is equal to 7. And so that gives us our equation of y equals mx plus c. So we've managed to answer this first question. Right, what about this next one? 
we've got this line L1, which is this one here, and it passes through 1, 1 and 3, 7. And we want to determine the equation of line L2. So it's perpendicular to L1 and we know it passes through 3, 7. So we've got to find the gradient of L1 first. So let's do that. The gradient of L1 is equal to, well, we've got two points on that line, so we can do change in y. Remember that symbol delta just means change in, change in y over change in x. The change in y from 1 to 7 is 6. The change in x from 1 to 3 is equal to 2. And 6 over 2 is 3. So that's the gradient of L1. The gradient of L2 is a negative reciprocal of that. So the gradient of the line 2 is a negative reciprocal of that, which is minus a third. And we also know L2 passes through the point 3, 7. So we're going to write that point down. And now we just need the equation of line which has that gradient and passes through that point. So we do what we usually do. Y equals mx plus c, we know the m, we don't know the c, and we substitute these values in, that's the x, that's the y. So 7 minus third times 3, well a third times 3, it's a third of 3 is 1, but it's minus that, so it's minus 1 plus c, add 1 to both sides, you've got 8 is c, and that gives us the equation y equals mx plus c plus 8. So that is the equation of LT. Right, this one, question 3. Are the lines with equations 2x plus 3y equals 6 and 5 equals 3x minus 2y parallel, perpendicular or neither? Now we need to find the gradients of each of these lines first. And you remember that to find the gradient of a line which is not in the form y equals mx plus c, we just make y the subject. So if we've got 2x plus 3y equals 6, then we, can, we want to make y the subject, so we want to subtract 2x to get rid of that plus 2x. So we get 3y equals 6 minus 2x. We divide both sides by 3 to get rid of that times by 3 and divide each individual term by 3, not the whole thing over 3. So that's 2 minus 2 thirds x. And that means the gradient is the number in front of the x, which is minus 2 thirds, not just 2 thirds. And let's do the same with the second one. We've got 5 equals 3x minus 2y. We can use something called the swap C trick, what we're subtracting and the result. I'll explore that in other videos. So we've got 2y is equal to 3x minus 5. We divide both sides by 2, so we've got 3 over 2, x minus 5 over 2. And that means the gradient is 3 over 2. Now, if these lines were perpendicular, then the product of the gradients would be minus 1. We saw that earlier. So if you ever need to show that two lines are perpendicular, just multiply the gradients together and show you get minus 1. And it's clearly not parallel because those gradients are not equal to each other. So if we multiply them together, minus 2 thirds times 3 over 2. Well, it's going to be negative because negative times positive is negative. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. It's 6 over 6, which is just 1. So we do get minus 1. And therefore, we have to make a conclusion. Uh, therefore, lines are perpendicular. Now, as a final question, we've got this. We've got this line L1 here, and it has the equation y equals minus half x plus 8. And that intersects with this line L2 here at this point here and that line L2 is perpendicular and we need to find the coordinates of A, which you can see is the y-intercept of this line. So notice that these two lines have this point in common and that point there is the x-intercept of this line. And you remember to find the x-intercept of a line, you just make the y-value zero. So let's make the y-value zero in here. We've got y is equal to minus half x plus eight and we're making y zero to find the x-intercept, so minus half x plus eight. Let's just double both sides to get rid of that over two. So we've got zero is equal to minus x plus 16. Add x to both sides, we have x is 16. So we know therefore that this point has coordinates 16, zero. So if we just draw the line L2 again, we've got L2, we've got a point there which is 16, zero, we also know the gradient of this line as well. We know the gradient of that line is minus half, so the gradient of L2 must be the negative reciprocal of that. The negative reciprocal, the negative becomes positive, and the reciprocal of half is 2, so we know this has gradient 2. 
So let's now find the equation of this line. We've got y equals mx, where m is 2, plus c, we don't know the c yet, and then we just substitute these values into the equation. So we got 0 is equal to 2 times 16, which is 32, plus c, which means that c is minus 32. So this equation is y equals 2x minus 32. Now, can you see, because that point is the y-intercept of this line, the y-intercept is just minus 32. And therefore, our final answer, that coordinate of that point, it must be 0 minus 32.